Joining me back on the show is the striking Viking, Caitlin Young. What's going on, Caitlin? Same old, just training this morning. How are you? Good, good. Uh, I wanted to get into that first, is the morning training. You're a morning person. You train early in the morning. I'm catching you at 9 a.m. Do you notice any cognitive and physical benefits from being an early riser? Well, less like, yes, I think, and I've noticed this too when I've done personal training. If you do the early stuff, I mean, obviously when you're getting ready for a fight, you just don't let things get in the way, and we do two-a-days. But there are a couple of reasons for the super early. There's less stuff can go wrong in your day at like 5 or 6 a.m., so you're more likely to get it done, I think. You know, like just stuff doesn't pop up. Um, but then also when you're getting ready for a fight, it gives you a long time to rest in between. And something I've noticed because I – Um, my next fight is in the States, but a lot of my fights have been abroad lately. And if I have that split, if I'm used to training at, uh, you know, 6 a.m. my time and then 4 or 5 p.m. my time, no matter where I go in the world, it's not that far off, no matter what time I'm fighting. So in my sleep schedule starts to split as well. So it's made things way easier to travel and fight. I don't think I feel the same sort of jet lag stuff other people complain about. You're away from the sport for many years, flying under the radar, honing your skills. Normally fighters, they want attention, you know, but you seem to not be in the media as much. Do you yep. see that as a blessing in disguise? Yeah, I think it was. And I think, I think especially for me, um, because I got into the media so early in my MMA career. Um, I had a fight on that primetime CBS. It was the first show, but it was my, it was my, I was only eight months in mm-hmm. to fighting MMA, so it was a lot at once. I was a baby. I was like 22 years old, you know. Um, so I think it was a lot at once, um, and it was nice to kind of step back and <clears throat> only think about what I want to do instead of like all these pressures and all these. You know, I enjoy doing interviews now, but I feel like I, I have maybe more to say. All right, you returned at Ryzen 12 last August. Take us through the whole experience of making your return to MMA in Japan and getting the dominant decision win over such a popular figure as, uh, you know, King Reyna. It was a really great experience. I, um, first of all, my corner, Nick Thompson was a blast. Like we've been training together for, um, more than 10 years. So that was fun. Like to just go with him because he fought in Sengoku a bunch back when he was active. He's been out for a while, you know, now he's just an attorney. So um, and coaching, so it was fun. We had a, a great time. Horizon was a really good promotion, but it felt super, very natural. I was uh, so relaxed, I almost was worried because I was like, man, am I not gonna be up for this fight? Sometimes if you're too relaxed, you fight like a dud. But I tend to be a really fast starter. And that was uh, evident in some of my MMA fights. I come out so hot and then I fizzle. Um, but I think some of the adjustments I've made to my training and just my mindset, like I don't warm up as much cause I, kn- I know I'm going to fight the second I get I'll fight hard the second I get in. Um, so I've made some adjustments for myself that I had learned from Thai boxing and I was really able to transfer them to MMA and it felt amazing. It felt, I fought exactly the fight I wanted to fight. Have you seen fighters before like warm up too hard and then when they mm-hmm. get out there, they don't perform to the level that they should? Yep. They, they sometimes won't have much left. And I think, I do think there's a relationship between how nervous the fighter is and how much of a warm up they need. Um, Cause I, I remember like in early fights feeling like it feels, I don't know why, it feels like you forgot how to do the things you've been doing every day, all day. Uh, so it's like a good reminder to them sometimes like, no, you're good at this. You're going to be just fine. Um, but I think after a certain number of fights, it's, it is a waste of, waste of energy like done enough times you know you're gonna go out and and fight super hard so you don't need to have this uh you know thousand hour warm-up yeah when you look back and critique your performance are there any moments you saw in that fight that you could have probably finished reyna yeah i mean maybe she was pretty durable Mm -hmm. and i think um there's some things that i felt like I wanted to do before the fight and and then sometimes you get in and it, it's, it doesn't quite feel like it's there um, for instance I had trained a lot of knees I was like she's short I'm gonna be able to near because I know she's gonna come in and 
I had planned to do them. And then in, in the ring, I just, I was like, oh, it's not quite right. I could feel why it wasn't right, but I didn't know why. And then later in an interview, she was like, yeah, we were waiting for it to me. So I could shoot, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> like, sometimes, you know, but you don't know why, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe more volume would have done it, but she, I think, um, you know, in the third round, my corner asked me to commit a little bit more to try to finish her, but that's when she got um, maybe her most productive takedown. And that's why I had kind of been shying away from it. So um, it is one of those that I'm not sure that, that going for the finish harder would have been the answer. It, frankly, what might have been better was to fight her from guard. Hmm. I think the finish would have come there faster than the feet. Uh, you know, in hindsight, I don't think her defense there is as good as it would have been. You know, like she's great from side mount. She loves that position. But I think uh, from guard, she could have been stopped. Shortly thereafter, the news was announced that you would be stepping down from your matchmaking duties and returning to the Invicta cage. What are your thoughts on the current state of the featherweight division? I think there's a lot of um, untapped talent. I think, you know, you can't take a division and compare it to another division when um, the featherweights have been overlooked in a lot of ways. You know, Invicta's been there. Uh, some other organizations are doing them as well, but they don't get the same volume of fights as other divisions. Um, and as a result, like, yeah, it's going to make them a little rusty. That's, that's what happens when you don't fight frequently. So I think uh, you know, as featherweights are able to stay more active, people are going to see that it's a, an exciting division, you know, and just like you would, you know, you can't complain about women not having as many knockouts when you cut the weight divisions off low. The same is true of men. You don't let the big boys hit, they, there are less knockouts. Yeah. Um, so I think it's going to be a knockout heavy division given time to grow. And if they're getting a lot of fights against other tough 45s instead of you know, sometimes you see the situation where it's a, a feeder type situation where, you know, one local promotion has a girl and they just give her easy fights or uh, even a bigger promotion does. They kind of hold her away and don't don't give her tough fights. And I think as the 45s are able to kind of uh, sharpen each other, it's going to blossom into a really great division. Do you think that that is more common now that people are padding their records in the lower, you know, in the lower, uh, I guess, the regional scene? Yeah. Than, than in the past? Yes, only because they can. Like, I think before, um, this is true of men's MMA too, it's just the, the time where they could start padding came earlier. Yeah. Uh, I think before there just wasn't enough, there weren't enough fighters. There wasn't enough volume of bodies basically to do that. Before, like when I first started, it was like there were newer people and killers and there wasn't much in between where uh, like you see this in boxing all the time, they give fighters progressively harder fights. Um, and it's, it's frankly, like, even if you're not trying to feed one fighter, but just make them develop. Yeah. It, it gets progressively harder instead of easy fight, easy fight, killer, easy fight, easy fight, you know? Um, so yeah, I do. I think it's easier now just, just because of sheer numbers. All right. Invicta FC 32. You're facing Zara Dos Santos. She's yeah. making her promotional debut against you, which says a lot about her. She's fearless. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on yeah. her as a competitor? I think she's tough. She's got a great one, too. Um, you know, I think she... I saw her at, at tough tryouts. It looks like she's less comfortable on the ground. Uh, like, uh, there's maybe some tension there. Uh, but, you know, when you get in, you see, you know, she's a nice... She's got like nice long range and, and is good at finding it. So, um, you know, I think she's probably going to be looking to to use her strength. And again, uh, even the fight she's had in Europe, she's not she's not backing down. She's taking tough fights, which is uh, something I, I quite like in an opponent, actually. How long have you been in camp for this upcoming fight? Um, you know, I'm, I've gotten a little bit away from differentiating that way, and I'll say that only because I knew about this fight before. So I've been having it in my mind, um, and I do a little bit of an or unorthodox style maybe in preparation um, for these fights. I'm flying out to California tomorrow, and it's going to be 
an absolutely brutal three weeks. I've been training the whole time, but the um, the killer sessions start uh, start then. But I mean, uh, most of the time I'm doing I'm doing two a days with you know a day off here or there to do a medical or something. So. You just mentioned you're going to California. Where will mm-hmm. you be going, and uh, who are you working with out there? So my, I don't remember if I mentioned him last time I was talking to you. Um, my trainer, Corn Patrachapat, I'd been working with him in, in Thai boxing, mm-hmm. and um, he has been making great, uh, like great strides with c- coaching, not just for me but for MMA. He's bringing in. Uh, uh, a good jujitsu black belt, and we'll be working up at their gym up at, in uh, Redwood Muay Thai. Um, but I'll be, you know, obviously working the MMA stuff as well. And that's about, it's in Fortuna, California, so it's like four hours north of San Fran. Hmm. Um, and we'll be, you know, hitting it hard the last few weeks before heading down to Oklahoma. It seems like cardio is a big focus for your training. Do you feel that mm-hmm. the, that is one of your main assets during a fight? Yeah, so, uh, you know, especially the last several years, I've, I've really evolved into a pressure fighter in a lot of ways. And uh, the only way you can be a pressure fighter is if you have confidence that you are you have what it takes to break another person mentally. Um, and it's really hard to have that if you don't also have confidence in your, um, your cardio, you know, your grind. Um, you see a lot of fighters, some fighters fight that way with wrestling, but, but uh, some fighters fight that way with, striking, with a striking base as well. And... And that's where a lot of that comes from. Like, regardless if I'll need as much cardio as I train, I know it's there if I need it. She, like I mentioned earlier, she's making her promotional debut. Mm-hmm. But does it almost seem like you're making your promotional debut in a way because it's been so long? Yeah, sort of. I mean, stuff has changed. I mean, it feels like a world apart yeah. uh, from where I was then. I mean... Um, you know, Julie was doing my job last time I fought for them, or my former job last time I fought for them. So, um, it is, it is interesting and it feels nice to be on the other side. Being like working for Invicta had made me such a promotional snob, like I'll go somewhere and Ryzen was great. They're super professional, but sometimes I'm like, how do you guys not have weigh-ins on time? I know it's not that difficult. Invicta did it with a small staff. You can do this. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's nice, like, uh, you know, obviously I I love the promotion when I fought there before. Um, but then, you know, I have great great affection for it and, and the people working there after, after being on the other side of the desk. How do you picture this fight going down on November 16th? Hmm. You know, I try not to have a ton of expectation I probably said this last time um because I don't I don't think it's good to like get emotionally attached to an outcome uh I think I'm going to put pressure on her and then see what she gives me um but I I see myself finishing this fight all right you have been around the sport for many years and you face some of the biggest names which Mm -hmm. fighter do you believe does not get enough credit for their skills and contribution to the sport Ooh, male, female, or you don't care? It doesn't matter, anybody. Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, there are a lot. You know who I really don't, it, it kind of breaks my heart, is, uh, man, Megumi Fuji was amazing. Like, uh, and nobody knows her. And she was on, I think, an 18 fight finish streak yeah. or something like <laughs> crazy like that. Something nuts. Um, and she's a coach now. <clears throat> in Japan, but she, I think, uh, and would fight everywhere. She fought one of my teammates at 125. She's nowhere, you know, small. Um, and she was awesome. I don't think, at least in the U S I don't, I don't think she gets enough credit or, uh, recognition at all. Sometimes it's almost two worlds apart, you know, the East and West. A lot of people yeah. know about this side, but they don't know about the other side, you know. So I guess it's, it's the job of the fighters to kind of go back and forth and kind of relay the information. Yeah. When she was fighting here, it's just, it was uh, it was like like 10 years too early. I mean, imagine the, the star she'd be now yeah. had that been happening, you know. So, um, <clears throat> 
It's, it's, you know, it's, that's a good question. And there's, there's probably many more. She's just the first that comes to mind on the spot. For sure. Uh, one more question before I let you go. Invicta FC 32 main event is between Pam Sorensen and yeah. Felicia Spencer for the vacant featherweight title. I know you will be watching this cage side most yeah. likely. Who do you feel oh, yeah. has the best set of skills to win the belt? So this fight's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Felicia is like bigger, like just naturally bigger and she's a black belt. She's been striking a long time and she's very creative. That's why she's fun. And like, really, honestly, I think that's why she's fun to watch because she's just like, oh, I'm going to do this here. Like she was needing somebody in the face from a standing guillotine, whatever. Um, but Pam... And this is not Felicia, no, through no fault of Felicia's, uh, her own, and I can say this as having mashed some of her fights, <laughs> um, she hasn't had quite the same level of competition. And it's not that she didn't want to, just fights fall through and, and somebody stepped up, but it wasn't somebody uh, who had more experience than her. Um, where Pam has had some really tough fights, um, and she's been in against uh, real gritty fighters already. And Pam, I think, is a purple or brown belt. She's real heavy on top. She's got good striking. You know, uh, she was on a Muay Thai show with me up here where she put a girl's nose on the other side of her face. So it's a really, really interesting matchup because I think each one of them brings something different to uh, to the table. And we'll see uh, over five rounds, you know, I think uh, in particular, like grit matters a little bit more. So. I won't uh, make a prediction on that one, but I would definitely say don't miss it. Uh, they're both awesome. All right, November 16th, Invita FC 32. Caitlin Young will face Zara Dos Santos in Oklahoma. Thank you, Caitlin, for your time. It's always good talking to you. Yeah, thank you.